some moments in the garden, the autumn, the destruction, the decay, but also the renewal. New plants coming all the time. The Eucomus bicolor. Now in full flower. These wonderful bicolored flowers, hence the name. Leaves getting quite heavily eaten by slugs. Contrast beautifully with a bull's golden grass that seeds around the garden and gets left where we would in some places. And even the bright yellow, brown and greens of this Dactylariza going down here with a and lovely white form of Crocus nudiflorus. This is one of our seedling ones. This is not Orla, it's a seedling. Selected out seedling, or, or, well an unselected seedling. A very beautiful, dark, dark form of Crocus speciosus. We got this from our friend Alistair McKelvey. And it's dotting about through this bed here. But the, just the colours of autumn, the leaves. Hazels are great plants for the garden, and the hammond, none more so than the hamamelis, the witch hazels. And the trees just above us here. And every year it puts this glorious scatter. Colchicum, agrippinum, these wonderful tessellated flowers suddenly popped up while the other colchicums are getting badgered. We've had a terrible three days of wind and rain that's just brought the leaves and the berries off the trees crashing down. But as you walk you can see the carpet. We looked in here, I think last one of my last videos we had a look in here, but now the cyclamen are doing really well. They're coming up and it's particularly good to put these pale leafed ones in a, in a darker setting. If I zoom back you can start to see that it's in quite a dark area under a lot of trees and shrubs and you know look, looking up the canopy above us through there we, we have a fairly dense canopy above of the acers. So there we go the, across the bulb bed. So these beds looking a bit going back now. Some crocus over there. Culture comes now past their best, battered by the rain and the wind. The still Corydalis. Foliage is always going to be interesting. The giant leaves of Podophyllum pel Plyanthum. These giant leaves, they really are big. The flowers were earlier in the year, but they've gone. You can see they left no fruits. But just around the garden, we can see the this is the bed that's lots of plants in the spring, particularly trilliums. And although we can, the trilliums have now all set seed, and we can see the, the dried remains of the stems. But down here, look, noses, noses, noses. There's next year's plant there waiting to burst out. Tiny cyclamen seedling. More trillium noses everywhere, lots of cyclamen seedlings. There's more cyclamen. I keep scattering seed. Oh, here's on the surface here. This is um, Dicentra cucularia and it comes right to the surface and this is where it likes to be to flower. These little rice grains scatter and spread it. If you think it's there and I used to lift it and think oh I better bury it deep and it didn't flower so well. It really likes to be just below the surface. But this, this bed will get a mulch soon from the compost and that will cover and put these just give these a protective layer. We walk round the Salmisia is of course always giving us cover. Peony, Lutea, Ladloii, the big plants just over here and all around here there are these self-sowing seedlings and invariably I'll need to get them up, most of them up because otherwise it will become a jungle of peonies. The dark form of Colchicum, 
one of the garden cultivars. Lovely dark stem, obviously got speciosum in it, maybe something else, it's maybe just a selection. It's past its best, it's got battered in the rain, but still with the yellowing stems of the Corydalis, it brings lovely interest. Just as we move around we can see more of the leaves coming off of the Acer. Masakazuki. Across the very white Betula Utilis. Rhododendron Berevii behind it and Rhododendron Rex Victolactium above it there. Down here the underneath the Rhododendron Roxianum Orionostis. Little rhododendron underneath a nice clump of cyclamen, Hedrifolium album. So there's just so much around this time. More leaves, a giant cassiope. Calcicum speciosum album. Great plants for spots that allow space for their leaves in the spring and they grow in that bed, they're growing nicely through some aquilegia foliage which helps support them. And there's another lovely, okay, just look at that jungle tapestry of foliage and texture. Again, a few big self-sown seedlings from the peony. There's it up there. Oh no, but we can just, if we go here, you can see why we get so many self-sown seedlings. There's the seed capsules. And out of them comes big, large, round seed pods. Seeds that lie, that pop everywhere. In fact, here's, here's an old capsule down here, look. That's been a a seed. That's the size of them. They're big. That one's rotted or not grown, but lovely red stems. So there we go. There's a quick look around a wee bit the garden in this getting deep into autumn. Soon to be heading into winter. Oh, just before I leave, I should maybe just come up here. The last of the Allium Wallachii ice are just in flower. Lots of seed pods. Here we have, look, lovely Allium Wallachii. The flowers are actually going over, but masses of it there are seeding around. Yet more self-sown peonies. So this time, it's time for me to go and have a cup of tea. So I won't sit on that seat, I'll go inside and sit on a nice dry seat.